Well, hello there. Welcome to the nth degree. Hey there, Donna. How are you doing? Hi, Berlin. Doing well. Yeah. Hi, hello to our audience. Hope you're doing well. Thank you for joining us today on the nth degree. <laughs> you're, yeah, you are why we're here. Audience. Well, actually, Donna, you know, we, we would do it without an audience. <laughs> Probably, well, we do do it without an audience a lot of times, but exactly. yeah. So, but we love to, to put the word out there. So yeah. So Donna, today, this is going to be an awesome convo. <laughs> the audience already knows that because of the name of it, anxiety programming. Yeah, we are going to talk about it. <clears throat> so first of all, let's define programming. Let's well, define sure. what that is. Yeah, of course. Anything that is giving you a message that is um, not what you would typically be thinking. Right? Yes. There's, I mean, you, there, there's good programming and bad programming. Our parents hopefully programmed us with foundational biblical principles. Mm -hmm. Maybe not, but sometimes they did. And that's a good thing, right? Mm -hmm. You However, can program yourself with good principle. You know, go read Proverbs. Go read, um, <clears throat> you know, go read uh, Solomon was the wisest man. Go read lots of things in the Bible. Lots of things. New Testament, right. Old Testament. Yeah. And typically anything that you're learning is, is programming mm -hmm. in a good way, right? Yeah. But there's yeah. so much bad programming, negative that programming that we and don't it's, take into consideration. And it's going on in your life way more than you are probably cognitively thinking that it is. So let's talk about that. <laughs> let's go there. Let's talk about that. So you can be, you can be programmed by any group. Any group of people, any group of, uh, you know, gathering, any type of gathering. And if you're aware of the programming and if you're aware to the point where you're you're balancing it, am I the thing, the stimuli that's coming in? Am I taking a moment to decide to make a willful choice that I'm receiving that or I'm declining that? Am I letting it in the door in the gate? Or am I just kind of, I've parked me over here and I've become the blank slate and I'm letting any old thing that I see here or come near um, affect me without being the king in my kingdom that I am. So by saying, using those words, maybe we're helping you tweak a little bit of, of, about, we all know the phrase couch potato. And a couch potato just sits there and eventually it puts out roots and it grows, you know, greenery and all that stuff. And it overtakes the living room. And we, we get that scenario. But what's the opposite of that? It's being the gate at your gate. It's being the gatekeeper at your own gate or it's being your king in your own kingdom. We're just using some analogy there to to help you think about the many ways that you are receiving stimuli at any of your gates and what you what and why. Are you con consciously making decisions to let in and, and to limit? Mm -hmm. And of course, we know that the enemy has a very, very detailed, very convoluted, very uh, layered, very moneyed up, well-funded uh, agenda for what oh, you would think. I'm glad you said it like that. Very yeah. well-funded. Yes, very, very well funded because they very multi layered in exactly. many different dimensions the three dimension, the four dimension, the fifth dimension, the, the unseen dimensions of many, many multiverses. <laughs> yes, yes. And that's that's the spiritual side, but even in the natural. I mean, they will they will put the same programming into kids in education and then through the TV and then through the billboards that you see along the highway and then through um, you know, big companies that have slogans and stuff when you walk through their, you know, there it's all around you bumper stickers. I mean, there's so, so much programming and so much layering on and layering on. Mm -hmm. And there was, I believe it was um, Gables or Goebbels. I don't know how to say it correctly. The the marketing propaganda minister for Hitler. Oh, Goebbels. Mm -hmm. Goebbels. Yeah, he, mm -hmm. I think it was him who said, if you tell them, the, if you say a thing often enough, they'll think it's the truth. Right. right? So right. The, 
So I, let's I, let's pause there and say, so yeah. what we're talking about today, we're talking about the negative um, mind control things that you're under as human that you may not know you're under that are negatively, not positively, but negatively impacting you and that are pre it's a pretense that it's true. They are pretending to be true. That's right. to me, that's what mind control is. It's something that's pretending to be true, but it's there's really it's smoke and mirrors. There's no truth to it. Right. Right. Like humans cause climate change. And oh, we could go on and on. Yeah. Yeah, we can go on yeah. and on. Yeah. But here's the thing is that when you're in the frequency of anxiety and you're in a frequency of fear, mm -hmm. this is this is what's impacting most people on a day-to-day -day basis. I mean, yeah, even so, if we're aware of it, it's still impacting us. Yeah, I just have to smile because I just want to say to our audience, if this is catching you by surprise, slow down a minute. Don't turn us off yet. Take a big <laughs> breath. We want to talk to you, want to help you. <laughs> we want to talk to you, but even from our own experiences about the frequencies that you're running into because of mind control, because of how you're being controlled in the world today. The world is a world system and the systems of the world um, have been here a long time and they've only increased in their agenda and goal. And we don't have, um, we're just here to talk about it. We're just, we're just gonna throw out some things for you to consider and think about. But one of the things that started this whole conversation was um, we were talking about how the, um, how anxiety runs your life and what you do as a result of that that programming to be anxious mm -hmm. um, another way to say that is worried so talking about anxiety and worry and what in the world system causes this in your realm in your atmosphere in your home in your workplace and how to as a child of god stand and have a different thought or to at first recognize it and see that it's happening so that you can overcome it in Jesus, not alone in your own human being, but as a connected one to the, to the kingdom of heaven through Jesus, how do you overcome it? How do you just see it, call it for what it is, know what it is and ask Holy Spirit, teach me about this. Right. Yeah. And so we were talking about are the coping mechanisms that people use to cover up the anxiety or what they have chosen to either ignore it or succumb to it. Mm -hmm. But ignoring it can be just as bad as succumbing to it. So, True. so on, I'm going to go on the ignoring it bit for a minute because I hear so many people in my, you know, I'm a business coach and a lot of people say, oh, I'm busy. And they think that's a good thing. <laughs> and when I say, yeah, how are you doing? I'm busy. I usually say, oh, I'm sorry. Because <laughs> busyness is a distraction mechanism that will keep you doing, 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 doing. There's no productivity in busyness, right? There's nothing actually being value add produced in just being busy. Mm -hmm. And it's usually a distracted place because I don't want to be alone with my thoughts right now. I'm in fear. I'm, a, I'm afraid that if I just stop and settle down and just think that I will go down a rabbit hole and I won't be able to get out of it because they don't have the tools to, to do that. And if I'm speaking anyone's language, don't worry, we'll give you the tools. But <laughs> I just yeah. want to set up that this is a thing and some people don't even realize they're doing it. I'm just going to stay distracted. I'm going to stay, oh, I'm working. I'm, this is me working, working, working. And it's really not producing anything. It's really not moving you forward in your destiny. And especially as a CEO with a CEO mindset and an entrepreneur, your Thinking time is much more valuable to your business in the long run than your doing time because you can hire doers all day long. You cannot hire another you to think. Right. And so, your busy is a mind control of the world system. 
Exactly. It can be. Now, now there are some times when you need to be busy. Like if you have a newborn, you're a busy person. Let me tell you. <laughs> well, they sleep for But, but, and, and if you have a crisis, um, uh, 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 I mean, you know, the, the surgeon in the ER, he is, he is busy on purpose. Okay. And, but he doesn't, he's not that 24 seven. Yeah, but so, I, wouldn't, I would consider that more of like a, an on purpose kind of, I'm right, doing right. my, job. I'm a focused, in that focused activity right now. It's right. not just busy, busy. It's right. like, and so there's a difference. Yeah. There's a difference. Just pointing out that nuance. Yeah. 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 So Berlin, you said something earlier, you said it's a form of um, self-medication. Busyness can be a form of self-medication. Right. A coping mechanism. Yeah. So uh, all we're saying to, to help you connect the dots out there, all we're saying is there are mind controls that we don't recognize them. Like a lot of people don't think busyness for business, busyness sake is a mind control issue, but we're saying it is yeah and so wow. where anything where your mind is occupied or full of a thing that you left your ability to make a willful choice about that activity or thing coming in oh you left it a while ago or let's say you left it two hours ago and 30 minutes ago you guys know what we're talking about that we're pointing out that Satan, the enemy, has a vested interest in you being mind controlled to that degree. And none of us are immune. No, we're not. It happens to all of us. And 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 there are plenty of um, measures out there that that we can talk about and we can point you to to uh, things to do so that you're so that you're when you become aware of wow, I think I'm being mind controlled. I need to just pull back a minute. Uh, what did you, what, did, you know, I find it interesting um, because your social media devices that you, that you engage on social media, um, social media is not going away, but we need to learn to uh, perhaps recognize our humanity within it. And how is it affecting our humanity? And take a minute and say, is this good or bad? I mean, here we're, we're on social media right now. <laughs> and um, so presentation of fact and information, presentation of not fact and not truth is going to be going on equally at the same time to begin to be able to discern those things. I'm sorry, I got kind of on a, a, a loop there. But what I really wanted to point out was um, Many of your devices will give you the option to put a time limit on your engagement with that screen device. And I, I think it's pretty funny how many of us, and you guys are out there, you know you're doing this. Admit it. You're doing it just like I'm doing it. You put the, you put the time limit on it, and it comes up and gives you the choice, and you say, ignore. <laughs> yeah. We are we're, we're human that way, but even that can be some we have to be aware that 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 can even something meant for good is it, we're blown by what we even meant, what it was meant for. Right. And Donna, you know, this is a whole different, uh, I mean, this is a big topic about the media, uh, the technology, excuse me, being literally designed to be intoxicating. Yeah. To, it, you're compelled, even the touch, and I don't, I don't even, oh, my phone is here. The touch on the screen, this is, this is called haptic. And it's literally, when you touch it, it's like a self-soothing kind of a thing. So mm -hmm. that's why people play video games and you just, mm -hmm. and you mm -hmm. touch it and you just. And, and it's and very, it, it, what does it do? It limits you. It focuses you in on this. I mean, yeah we're just talking about the many things that are in our everyday world. We're just happy to talk about them. And if you don't want to hear this, I'm so sorry, catch us on the next one, but we're just going to talk about it a minute because what it does or what it can do is it can, you can have anxiety in your body and be aware of it and not know where it came from. Yeah. And anxiety in your body means a high uh, adrenaline, high cortisol output and your body literally it's it's a toxic 
substance to your body over time. Your body is not meant to be running constantly yeah. on adrenaline. It's the it's the fight or flight um, drug. And so when you're constantly in that, it starts deteriorating your your body. Mm -hmm. It literally starts eating you alive. And if you cannot come down off of that anxiety <laughs> high, you are bound for a sickness, a disease, an illness, accidents, injuries, those kinds of things, because that is your, your body is not, it's not a sustainable state for your body to be in. I think you said that so well, Berlin. And I just would say to the audience, um, you know, rewind 30 seconds and listen to Berlin and say that again, because what she just said is what is killing humanity. And it's, it's, the, it's the, the places where you didn't recognize that that anxiety or stress level was that high, or you recognized it, but you're, you're like, I don't know how to get out of it. I don't know what to do. A lot of people will turn to pharma, pharmaceutical medications for things like that. Mm -hmm. But there are some spiritual ways that you can connect, you can um, engage to help you. And a lot of this conversation, and I know we, it may be that we've been all over the map already, but this conversation kind of got started because we were talking about um, some different ways we've been in an anxiety situation and realized it. And what did we do to tamp that down, to bring that to peace? Because Jesus, his kingdom is peace. And if you have, if, if you're like peace, I don't have any peace in my life. All we're saying to you is you have the inherited right in Jesus to have peace. And so there's a discrepancy. And so I need to get my, I need to engage with that kingdom of peace by acknowledging he's the prince of peace, the king of peace. He has shalom for me. He, but if I'm not engaged with it, I'm not tethered to it, connected to it. Who severed my tether to that, you know, or how do I do that? What, what are the practical steps? Well, I can tell you one or two and Berlin well, can too. <laughs> before, we, before we get to that though, I want to point out one more, um, reason why it's not your fault right <laughs> because yeah. we're our we're spirit soul and body right and if our spirit is doing all the work that's a very good thing but the the soul can fight against and so can the body so it's almost like one against two because what happens in the soul thoughts trigger feelings and this is all in soul and so you get used to having an emotion that becomes your habit and it's habitually becomes you and it becomes you know you're kind of in a mood and then all of a sudden if you keep that mood long enough like this is your personality it's like this is just how you are right and that is your soul because it's so addicted to an emotion because of the thoughts that are running. And then because of that emotion, that's a frequency, you're literally putting mm -hmm. out a frequency, your body gets programmed because of the sequence of chemicals released by that emotion. And so now your soul and your body are both saying, this feels comfortable, this feels like me, this feels like home. And so when your spirit says, no, we're going to do something else, your soul and your body says, uh-uh, not, not comfortable, not home, nah, -uh, no, uh-uh, I'm going to come back. And that is that default position. And so that's why you have to have a strong spirit in order to overcome this. And it's totally doable. It's totally doable. And mm -hmm. so now, Donna, how are we going to do it? <laughs> well, I, I love what you said that right there. And I also want to say this. The enemy of your soul, the unseen enemy, the unseen kingdom of darkness knows this. And this is how he's making you small. Yeah. Well, yeah. He's that, keeping that your soul and your body. Yep. Exactly. In a comfortable place. Right. And this is why Yahweh is, is, is not opposed. He doesn't mind stretching us a little out of our comfort zone because that's how you grow. That's how you mature. That's how you come. That's actually how you come to know who you really are. Yeah. And I want for all of you out there to know who you really are, because your spirit man has been around eons 
your spirit man in your body has been around the number of days on the planet that you're that you are uh, but but your spirit is connected to an eternal kingdom and and you're going to live there for eternity and so we can be that in the earth realm but we gotta learn how we gotta learn how and and getting rid of your anxiety is one helpful thing it's just one one piece of the pie that helps you realize well i can manage this part of me i can engage differently with this part of me mm -hmm. um yeah, so um, they don't have to be programmed by fear or, and, or world systems. Right. And I can program myself according to what God says. Yeah. And I can have a new thought about a thing. Mm -hmm. If your thoughts, if you have self limited your own thoughts and said, I'm not going to think about that, you, you just agree with darkness and the enemy not to be the, the real person that you are. Right. And so, how, you know, what are some things to do? if some of this resonates with you. So if you're out there and you're like, okay, finally they're, they're getting their groove on here. <laughs> well, I'll just give you, I just give, share an example because that's what we do on the Insta degree. We share transparently with our audience. Um, I was aware that I had a, um, oh, and, and anxiety is almost always linked to a fear. Mm -hmm. you, you, if you, if you, um, Berlin has a, 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 a brilliant thing that she runs with her coaching clients called lie busting. And it's almost always getting down to what is the real issue. And the issue is almost always fear-based. Mm -hmm. Well, the Bible says we don't have a spirit there. God didn't give us that fear. So if he didn't give us that fear, who gave it to us? The enemy of our soul, the one who wants to manipulate and control us. Mm -hmm. But we're here to be stewards of the earth. And in order to be the best steward of the earth that we are meant to be on, on the whatever cultural mountain we stand on, um, you have to know where would the enemy cause me to align with fear and believe a lie or where am I uh, not even aware I just have anxiety and worry but I now I'm aware of it and that's probably linked to something that I can do something about the spirit of pharmacia or the pharmaceutical industry aligned with that kingdom of darkness will tell you take a pill just take a pill and all your problems will go away Right, that right. is mind control. You have within you the kingdom of God if you're aligned with Jesus Christ, and you have the ability to overcome by the spirit of truth, talking to the spirit of wisdom, the spirit, the seven spirits of God, you know. And so here's an example. I became recently aware, I was walking through my house, and I'd had a conversation with someone on the phone, and I I could feel in my body this, I could really feel it in my physical flesh, this like a river of, eh, it was a dis dissonance and it just felt ugly in me. Yeah. And I'm like, that is not me. First thing to recognize is that this is not you. It's in you. It may be operating on you, towards you in any of your dimensional realms, but it's not your truest core spirit being. And so I was like, I don't like that. That's another good thing to start. When you recognize it, um, start uh, focusing on it, calling it out with your mouth, okay? So I did that. I just said under my breath, that right there, I can feel that. I don't like that. And that's not me. And so I, I was doing a, a something and I stopped in the middle of what I was doing and this is so key. Pause. You don't have to pause for 45 minutes, but if you'll pause for three, <laughs> it'll benefit your life. Right, so right. I just paused. I mean, sometimes I do this when I'm, you're walking through your house and you just pause in the middle of the room and you're like, I got to deal with this. I have paused and sat down on the edge of the bed and thought, I am not going to start this day this way. I'm going to change my trajectory right now. So uh, what I did in this instance was I, I, I asked Holy Spirit, what is it? And he said, you're afraid of this particular projected outcome. So I had a situation in my life and the enemy was doing a real, I didn't know it, but then I knew it, right? Mind control. I didn't know it. It was being projected. It was coming from outside, but it was where I noticed it was it making my physical body feel not right electrically. And so I just said, okay, what is being projected? And the, I mean, just right away, my spirit knew 
uh, it was this outcome being projected, this outcome, all negative, you know, two or three neg really negative things. And I said to my, I said to myself from my heart, do I believe this? And then I suddenly saw, well, actually there are other outcomes that are equally legitimate that are not coming from this, but they came from the inside of me. Actually, this could launch something really good. Actually, this could lead to another decision. Ask, actually, this, it, this issue could change some timings of some things that people will uh, actually, it would, be, it would be a good outcome. So I, that I began to see a, a different thing. But here's my, here's my final tip. So then what did I do with all that? I recognized, Holy Spirit was helping me in the moment. I so needed it. I had to make a willful choice. So as a redeemed person in Jesus Christ, I call my spirit forward and I said, I hereby, like I was writing my own decree in my own kingdom, I hereby decree what I am going to believe. That's right. I am going to believe. And I, what, it's, not, it's not fairy tale. It's not pie in the sky. It's not Pollyanna. It's your ruling from your own internal world what it's going to be, what you're going to let in as truth for you and what you're not. And in this circumstance, I had every right to do it. I could see it by that, by the Holy Spirit. I could see what what the enemy was trying to shut me down with was anxiety and worry. What Holy Spirit was helping me see was govern Donna, govern your kingdom, govern your thoughts, govern what you're going to think about this. Yes. Take a minute and decide what are you going to believe about this topic. And so I said out loud, I'm going to believe this. This is what I believe. And I believe this is connected to truth. And do you know right after that, that internal wool dissonance, it left. And the enemy was no longer able to project. I had closed my gate to him. And it was a demonic thing. It wasn't the truth. It was a horrible outcome to make to uh, this topic. Right. There's so this experience. is the power of intention and the power of visioning dreaming with Jesus what you want it to be instead mm -hmm. you know use your canvas of imagination that's on the inside of you it was given to you for a purpose love that yeah I love that well done you know that just reminds me they call it tell a vision television for a reason they're telling you their vision all day long that vision that <laughs> screen that device if you're not careful Walking by, you know, all of those things that are going on in various places that you that you didn't turn it on that channel or that frequency, but it's coming through in the space that you're in all day long. They're telling you the vision. Why are they telling you the vision? Because prophecy works, whether it's negative or positive. Yep, exactly. So so we've been really talking about what you can do in your own personal life and in your own realm and your sphere. But I have, this is a drum that I'm going to continue to beat, Donna. I know that you've heard this over and over. Say it again, girl. <laughs> <laughs> right. We are called to be maturing sons. We are called to restore the planet. We've got to start with ourselves, our family, our own, you know, little realms first. But the more we can control the frequency that we're putting out there and not coming into alignment with the frequency of anxiety and fear that's all over the globe, like literally scientifically, they have seen that e, it's EMF frequencies raise like off the charts compared to what normal was ever since, you know, to, I think it was from the Obama administration on, on up until now, it's just been going steadily up, mm -hmm. right? So we, though, if we can maintain our frequency and resonate with the frequency that heaven says you are, you are a king, you are a son, you are in peace, you have love, joy, peace, patience, mm -hmm. all of those. You are, you are always with me. I'm exactly. never going to leave you. You're never alone. alone. They, all of those frequencies that makes the fear frequency irrelevant. It's like if you threw a pebble into a lake, like a little pebble like this, boom, and then you threw a rock in, where's the ripples that you saw from the pebble? 
they're gone, like they're irrelevant, right? So a higher frequency and a higher state of being makes the lower frequencies irrelevant. It just wipes them out. So we are called to raise the frequency of the planet. And you guys, one person can't do this. We all have to lock arms and do it together. And there's going to be a tipping point where the mature suns rise up and we are able to come above that frequency and shifts will happen we see it all over when groups of people are coming together and praying for a thing things shift things move i mean yeah. jericho walls fell down right you know this whether, is why worship vocal worship of yahweh is a is a frequency buster exactly and worship and it's warfare it's we call it spiritual warfare it's unseen warfare it's frequency warfare mm -hmm. exactly and movement in our body means something you, we literally we're made of mostly water and so if we get a rhythm of a frequency going in our body that water is vibrating and moving at a wave frequency just like the waves of the ocean have a regular mm -hmm. rhythm when we are in a rhythmic kind of thing i love jumping on my trampoline you know there's plenty of other things to do you can worship with flags you can what get your body moving that will help get just your taking soul. a walk sometime uh, exactly just the walking the something right exactly get your body moving and it mm -hmm. will help you sometimes you have to just do so that you can be because being is what is going to change mm -hmm. the world but sometimes we just we can't go from, you know, anxiety and freaking out and, and uh, adrenaline rush and, and incoherence between our heart and our and our brain frequencies. Just uh, they're not all over the place. We can't go from that to being sometimes. Sometimes we can. Usually there's a little bit of doing in the middle. You have to yeah. take control of it. Take do some. Yeah. Breath you breath. have to govern it govern it exactly uh -huh. you have to govern it every realm is a kingdom and every kingdom needs to be governed mm -hmm. and who are you choosing to govern your realm or are other things coming in to govern your realm mm -hmm. you know sometimes your soul wants to govern your spirit realm sometimes your body wants to govern your soul yeah, you guys know what we're talking about. It happens. It happens to all of it us. It happens to all of us. But but <laughs> the ability to rise above that and go, no, 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 no. I am spirit first, soul second, body third, and I love my being. Mm -hmm. But we're going to operate in alignment. Right. And getting all of those parts of you as free and clean and clear, washed with living water, covered by the blood of Jesus. You know, in each of those layered realms, there's different things you do. You don't do spirit things in your body. You do body things. That's what Berlin was talking about, the do. Mm -hmm. You don't, but a lot of this is tied through two places in, in your being, your ability to speak mm -hmm. and your ability to have a heart that decides. Right. right. And the speaking is critical because that brings your thoughts that exist in the spirit realm into the 3D realm. And you're literally sending a vibration into this third dimension realm. And we are the hands and feet of the Lord, but we are also the voice. Right. And the voice is very important in the decade that we're in. The other thing I want to say is um, also your expression, your whole being's expression the the redeemed of the lord the who have work to seek to cleanse and purify and um let god work on your your body your soul and your spirit getting all parts of those that are integrated back to your whole being and and if you track with us you know that we believe that sometimes all of you isn't there and all, all or all of you isn't forward you know present Right, for right. whatever reasons and we you know those are things we can talk about but um your your expression of your whole is very important to the earth realm because god in his infinite wisdom tethered us here for a time for a certain um time round and then and 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 we have a job to do and an assignment and just our being being the best being we're meant to be not to be somebody else not to be only a half person not to be made small by the enemy but just to be 
That's what we're here for. And when we're all doing this together, our vibrational frequency is going to change the earth. Exactly. Because that's what earth is waiting for. Earth is a sentient being waiting for us who are on acting, who are assigned as stewards to steward earth mm -hmm. correctly. All of creation groans for the maturing mm -hmm. of the sons to be revealed. And there's a variety of tools that we have in a variety of realms that we operate in the spirit realm the 3d realm that's soul and body realm physical realm that we operate in and and the enemy knows these things and the babylonian system of the world knows this too and some of our brothers and sisters in christ don't know this enough yet perhaps is the way to say that or they're just um coming into the understanding of it it's dawning on their on on, on them Mm -hmm. uh, we got to pray for our brothers and sisters and we got to be careful what our mouth is releasing because if we're releasing curses instead of blessing, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. I agree. Well, Donna, oh my goodness, this has been so good. Um, <laughs> We'll probably talk more about programming later, but we really wanted to address this because it's a now kind of conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If this, if this topic of programming is interesting to you, if you want us to talk about it more, we, we can break it, break it down for you dozens of other ways. This is okay. just our first launch into it to call it to the surface and say, Hey, it's a thing and we've got to talk about it. That's so good. Yeah. So yeah, shout out to those of you who are giving us awesome comments on Rumble. Let us know. Let us know. Yep. And uh, YouTube and Facebook and wherever else we want to shout out to. Let's see. Who do we have today? Jenny. A shout out to Jenny. Thank you so much for commenting. And let's pick one other one here. Oh, this is, there's so many, so many good ones. How about Terry Lynn? <laughs> Thank you, Terry Lynn. So do go ahead and comment. Hopefully we will be able to shout out your name on air and give you a little bit of I loving. Know. I know. Like that. Love and hugs. To you. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I just want to say, some of you are curious, why are they on Rumble? We're on Rumble because in at Rumble, you, you can find us and we're not getting censored. Like we may be getting censored in other platforms. We don't know that, but we might be. So you speak truth, oh wise one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's just our little, our, our way of saying um, we we want to be where big tech can't shut right. us, in, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so Donna, people can find you at dwellhouse.net. Dwell That's me. And I would love to comment with you there. And if you have commented, I'll try, I'm trying to get back to you as soon as I can. <laughs> <laughs> awesome awesome and you can find me at spiritcenteredbusiness.com and you know i work with coaches who want to put their business together who want to put online products together design memberships programs retreats all all of that kind of stuff that pulls the message out of them and monetizes it so that you can yes. go forward and be the influencer that you were called to be and then i also work with business owners in general to build your business from heaven in the spirit realms so that you are fully protected fully resourced and that is what spiritcenterbusiness.com you will find over there all right you guys i think that is it when it comes to anxiety programming and really co coming against it donna what should we do take it to the nth degree awesome <laughs> bye you guys bye everyone